good morning, afternoon, evening, night. Whenever you're watching this, geographers, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Now, so far in Unit 3, we've been looking at culture, the cultural landscape, how cultures impact the geographic location in which they reside in. And today we're continuing these conversations as we look at Unit 3, Topic 3, where we're going to be talking about different cultural patterns. Now, when geographers analyze different locations, what they're looking for is the cultural landscape. We're looking at the culture that resides there. They're looking at the political and economic system. What food is being produced there? How are genders treated? What's the racial background? What's the different religions that reside in that location? What are the dominant languages? All these different cultural factors, all the way up to two, even the architecture of the area, the physical features, they all create a unique sense of place for a geographic location. Now, when we talk about a place, remember place is broken up into human characteristics and physical characteristics. Human characteristics would be things like the religion, the language, the age distribution, just exactly how many people reside in that geographic area. And the physical components would be the actual terrain. Are there mountains? Is it deserts? Are we going to see more snow or rain? All of these different things create a place. Now, I also mentioned a sense of place. This is a weird phenomenon. Essentially, this is the feeling you get when you're in a geographic location. A sense of place comes from the unique distinctions that a place holds. Those physical components, those human characteristics, they help us create a sense of place in our minds. These feelings are based off experiences that we have with a particular geographic location. For example, if you go to New York City and you're walking down Times Square, you can feel right away a unique sense of place. You can pick up on the sense of the fast-paced society, the bustling and the hustling of the streets, the economy that's thriving. All these different aspects make a unique sense of place for New York City. Or if you've been on vacation for a long time and you come home, or maybe you've been away at college, that first time you re-enter your city or your hometown, you can just feel like you're at home. These things give us a unique sense of place, and they're all defined by the different physical features we see, but also those humanistic characteristics that we become so accustomed to. We can gain this sense of place by looking at the different uses of public spaces, how people are interacting, how the physical terrain has been shaped. All these different things, all the way to the ethical ethnic breakdown or the religious components, the languages that are spoken, help identify in our minds that sense of place. Now, when looking at places, we can also see different centripetal and centrifugal forces at work. These are defined by different languages, cultures, ethnicities, religions, attitudes and beliefs, governments. All these things both help hold a society together and also push people apart. Centripetal forces are forces that pull people together. They hold the society as one. Oftentimes, this can be because of a common language language that's spoken, a national identity, a homogenous community, all these things would make a united identity for a place, and they pull people together. On the other hand, societies that have multiple languages spoken, lack cohesion, or have political and economic inequality or discrimination, will have centrifugal forces at play. These are forces that are pushing people apart. They actually cause the society to crack, cause division within the community. Now, just because a society has multiple religions, languages, languages or ethnicities doesn't mean that we're going to have centrifugal forces pushing people apart. Oftentimes, actually, diversity can create a stronger sense of identity and can pull people together, those centripetal forces. Centrifugal forces often happen because of inequality, lack of communication, racism, prejudice, tensions that build within a community. These forces then push people apart and cause division. All right, you know the drill by now. The time has come to practice what we've been learning. Look at the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're getting value on these videos, consider subscribing. And if you're still trying to get that A in AP Human Geography or you're worried about getting a five on the national exam, consider checking out my AP Human Geography Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that has practice quizzes, study guides, and review videos for all the units, and it'll definitely help you out. All right, I'm Mr. Sin. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for tuning in, geographers. Until next time, I'll see you online.